Again, if you take your Bibles and turn to 1 John chapter 5, it's the second part of what we talked about last week. And before I read um, the last two, just uh, uh, the verses that we're going to talk about, um, <clears throat> the title of the message, as you know, is We Know. We Know. And we've already covered that... <clears throat> We know what a Christian is. We know who Jesus is. And we know how to pray with confidence. And we are going to be looking at, we know how a Christian acts. We know the truth are the last two points. The brief introduction is this. Once again, we come face to face with the test of sonship, the test of truth. We know is the key phrase here. It's found in verse 2, verse 15, in our text, verses 18 through 20. There are several certainties found in this chapter. And I would encourage you to, once again, read the whole thing. But we want to look at verses 18 through 21. I think I said 20, but verses 18 through 21. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Once again, Brother Ray's message and mine will click this morning, and you will, I hope, get great gain from these two messages. So we left off last week with, we know how a Christian acts. We know. So when we're out in the world, we should be able to tell. The world's not going to know, but we should know. I mean, I've run across people and I just knew. I just knew that they were a Christian. And many times I've asked them. Are you a Christian? Yeah, and they've asked me the same thing. Are you a Christian? The Greek verb in verse 18, and I'll read that again because I don't want you to think it contradicts what Brother Ray said because it doesn't. It, it's in harmony with what he said this morning. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But that verb in verse 18 means does not practice sin okay we don't practice sin and as he read this morning and if we do we have an advocate with the father and the advocate is our intercessor intercessor jesus christ and when we ask forgiveness he is just and faithful to forgive us all our sins all our unrighteousness that's a good thing he does because his brother ray mentioned we are sinners we're saved sinners, but we're still sinners. I hate it with a passion, and I'm sure you do as well. Christians do not keep themselves saved, but they do keep themselves out of the snares of the devil, or they should. And if you're not, then you need to work on that. Jude 21 says, keep yourselves in the love of God. We've got to keep ourselves there. I mentioned before, you know, 
Paul talked about whipping himself into subjection. Now, many religions take that literally, and they get a, a branch or a leaf or a hip, hyssops or whatever, and they just beat themselves on the back until they bleed. But that's not what it's talking about. Whipping himself in the subjection daily for the cause of Christ that he's aware that he is a sinner and he's prone to make mistakes. And he's prone to sin and he needs to work on that. He needs to continually, you know, remind himself on who he is and how to conduct himself as a Christian. We need to do the same thing. It says there in verse 18, he that is begotten of God. It may refer to Jesus Christ, the only begotten son, or to the believer. And perhaps both are true here. We must yield to Christ in order to have victory. But we fight from victory as well as for victory. And in our day and age, it is a fight. We need to be able and willing to fight. Brother Ray entertained, <laughs> didn't know it, and I didn't know it until he told me this morning, but he entertained um, with the, the furnace man a Jehovah's Witness over the weekend, or over Friday, I should say, Thursday or Friday. There's many things that we have to overcome. There's many things that we need to win the victory over. And we're going to run across many people that don't believe the same way we believe. I mean, it's a shame, but that's how it is. See, God's people must keep their eyes wide open because the whole world lies in the lap of the wicked one. The latter part of verse 18 there keepeth himself and that wicked one touches him not. So we've got to keep ourselves. If we allow Satan to get into our into our hearts and our well, he's not going to get in our hearts, but into our minds and our thought pattern and starts drawing us away by everything that's out there. We're told to flee. If we flee, he will leave us alone. But do we do that? It's almost, it should be almost an everyday prayer. Everyday prayer to God that he keeps us, that he prevents us from Allowing the wicked one to enter into our homes and into our thoughts and into our, in our, into our lives. So we are to resist the devil and he will flee from us. But there has to be a resisting on our part. We can't just go along and twirl our thumbs, think everything's going to be okay and, and nothing's going to bother us or disturb us. That's not what it is. We need to resist. We need to resist the temptation. We need to resist that, that uh, part of us that, that wants to, to argue or that part of us that wants to uh, get back at somebody. Every single thing that is sin, Satan is going to use against us. A lot of times we don't recognize it at first. Satan is the god of this age and the prince of darkness. He has blinded millions of people spiritually and has kept them in bondage as we once were. Brother Chuck prayed for the salvation of God's people. That's what we need to do. Pray for the salvation of God's people. See, there's those that are condemned and those that are free from condemnation, but we don't know who those are. We have no idea who God's elect is out there outside of us and other 
churches of like faith. But there again, we, we may have somebody in the midst that's a member that still is in the world, that knows not Jesus Christ as Savior. We don't know that. We know by their profession that they are Christ. That's why we are told many times by their fruits you shall know them. We should be able to know how a Christian acts. We should be able to know through their life. We should be able to know through their talking, through their actions. We should be able to know. And especially amongst ourselves, we should be able to know. The last point is we know the truth, which is very important in this day and age. Verse 20, and we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his son Jesus Christ this is the true God and eternal life we only have eternal life through Jesus Christ if you're trying to get eternal life or you're trying to get to heaven through any other means than Jesus Christ it's not going to happen it's not going to happen Now, there's a lot of speculation going on today, and I, I, you know, I wish I could answer you on this, but I can't. I don't know. I, I just don't know how it's going to play out. Is the vac I know what the vaccine, what I have researched, I know what the vaccines have in it, and I know that part of it, but is the vaccine, is it a prelude for the mark of the beast? I don't know. I can't give you a solid answer that it is, but it is sure looks like it's leading up to deceiving the people. My goodness, they've got three different companies out there and they still can't tell us whether it's 100% yet or not. We got people that are getting the virus that have already had the complete vaccine. So we can't come to a solid answer, a solid agreement. I know this. From my studies, from listening to other Baptist preachers, that I'm not going to know who the Antichrist is because I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be out of here. You won't be here if you're a true child of God. You will not be here when that happens. There may be signs, there may be things leading up to that point, but we're going to be taken out of before that happens. But at what point? And how much of a fight are we going to have to fight until that time? Many Christians have just laid down and given up. Can't give up. It's a fight to the end. What did Paul say? I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. See? And there's a crown waiting for me and others like me. I press toward the mark of a high calling. That's what we must do. It may take our life but so be it that's just a that's just the next step before we see Jesus and I don't see anything wrong with that many Christians today for some reason are scared they're frightened and I mean I understand that to a point but look what you have to look forward to why would you be afraid the best is yet to come, right? I mean, look, look, we've been preaching this. We've been preaching and practicing this stuff for how long? We know what's coming. We know that this time is supposed to come. We know this was going to happen. Didn't catch us off guard. We may not like it. But we knew it was coming, right? We don't know what else is going to happen, but everything has been told us that's going to take place. But I know this, and my God is on his throne, and Jesus at his right hand, and they're watching over his elect. He cares for his elect. He loves his elect. 
It's like a man told me one time, he was in a, in a restaurant eating, a guy came up and smacked him across the back of the head and says, I'm going to punch you out. He says, no, you're not. The guy stepped back and looked at him and says, what do you mean, no, you're not? He said, you're not going to do anything unless God allows it. So that's the way we have to take life. We have to look at it that way. Nothing's going to happen unless God allows us. And if he's protecting us and he knows what's going to happen, he knows our heart and everything, then why should we have worries? It's in our nature. I understand that. And I'm, I'm speaking to myself. I'm one of the most stressful persons around. And just ask my wife. But I have to stop myself a lot of times and say, you can't think this way. You can't do this this way. Because God is in control. So we know the truth. Why do we know the truth? Why doesn't the world know the truth? Because they do not have the leadership of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit that shows us that truth. And without Him, we don't have anything. So what's going to happen at the rapture? The truth's going to be taken away. Why? Because the church is gone, we're gone, and the Spirit of God will be gone. We won't have that luxury. We have a luxury right now. The Spirit and the Word always agree. For the Spirit is truth, verse 6, and God's Word is truth. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. You want to know the truth? <laughs> it's right here. I'm dealing with a situation in my in, in my thoughts that I run across somebody, and I'm I'm having to make sure I put this in the right perspective. But there is, I'll just put it this way to you: there is no substitute for the Bible. Amen. There is no substitute for truth, and there is no substitute for the Lord's true testament Baptist church. Nothing else out there can even come close to those three things. And if people would just see that, if they would just understand, then they may serve God better. It's a surety when you die, you're going to go to one of two places. You're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. That's an assurity. Nothing in Scripture gives us any other um, possibilities. It doesn't give us an alternative. You're either going to hell or you're going to heaven. That's it. One or the other. I can tell you what hell's going to be like because I can tell you what it says there in Luke 16. I can tell you what heaven's going to be like because I can tell you to, all through the Scripture tells us what it's like, especially in the book of Revelation. It tells us what it's going to be like. And let's say you know, we didn't even know what heaven's going to be like. We, let's say we don't even know for sure. Of course, we don't know positively what it's going to look like. But one thing I do know, the thing that I'm most interested in seeing in heaven is my Savior's face. Amen. Why should we be looking for anything else but his face? The one who died for us. The one who shed his blood for us. The false teachers John was opposing taught that one had to belong to a special inner circle before one could understand spiritual knowledge. But John affirms that any true believer can know God's truth. Did you know that Christ died Friday? According to all religious media he died friday 24 and 24 makes 48 and 24 makes 72 you can't fit friday to sunday in 72 hours you can't do it you can try as hard as you want it's three days that gives us what wednesday at six o'clock i think we figured that that's when he when he died but they don't want to know that. They don't want to hear that. It messes up their, their uh, 
wholesale. Now I want to see a show of hands. How many, either last night or this morning, seen a rabbit lay an egg? Anybody? Brother Chuck and I, we're not the oldest, older ones here, but we are old enough to know that in 70 years, we've never seen a rabbit lay an egg. You get what I'm talking about? Is that truth? The world thinks it is. The world believes that a rabbit can lay an egg. That's not truth. So if it's not truth, then what is it? It's a lie. That's right. It's a lie. And as Brother Ray said this morning, God doesn't lie. And if you say you don't sin, then you make God a liar. God is not a liar. He didn't make a rabbit to lay eggs. I want you to turn over you got, you got to see this, but turn over to 2 Thessalonians, if you would. I know Brother Ray was almost all around this this morning, but it wouldn't have matter if he touched on it or not. But 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8. And then shall the wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And when all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. What's happening from Friday to today? What's happening? It's unrighteousness. It's a falseness. It's a lie. There's no truth in it at all. None. You say, Brother Reed, how do you know that? Because I studied it. I looked at it because I once did it. And once I seen the truth of it, I had to repent because it's a lie. It's wrong. Now, I want you to see a story here. If you, turn, you all know the story. It's over in John chapter, uh, John chapter 3. You turn there, John chapter 3. I think most of you know where I'm going. But I want you to listen to this story. And I want you to listen to see how this played out. There was a man, starting at verse 1, John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, I wonder why he went by night. Does that, does that give you a clue? <clears throat> Rabbi, we know that thou art teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So at least Nicodemus recognized that, right? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? How can that be? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now that's actually a foolish question, right? And if Nicodemus really knew who Jesus was, he wouldn't have asked such a foolish question. But he spake of the temple of his body, Excuse me, went the wrong verse. Jesus answers, I'm sorry. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Remember I told you about, this was ironic because I've seen it again. 
Remember I told you last week there's only one place in the human body where water and blood can flow? Well, I see another painting over the weekend that was on the news, and don't you know, right here's where it was on the right side. That's not it. That's not where he was pierced by the soldier's spear. It was not. But they pushed the narrative. Why is that? Because Satan is a great deceiver, and he's trying to get the religious world to see the difference. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and where there goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Nicodemus, you're a master of the Jews. How is it that you don't know? How is it that he didn't know? Because he wasn't a child of God at that moment. I mean, he was, because he was Elected and chosen before the foundation of the world. He just didn't know it yet. But that's how foolish we are before we're saved. We have all these foolish questions. Jesus answered and said unto him, Again art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know. And testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. That's what we face right now. Brother Chuck prayed about it. That's what we face right now. We teach, we preach, and we're not received. Why? Because man would rather hear a lie than the truth. So the true God is opposed to the false gods, the idols, Brother Ray touched a little bit on this morning. An idol is a man's conception of God. That's why they're made. That's why they're produced. This is our God. Look at him. You can see him. You can touch him. You can smell him. You can do whatever you want to do with him. But there he is. Well, that's a lot easier to see something like that than to try to tell somebody about this invisible, wonderful God, isn't it? My grandson asked me a question Friday. How do you know? <laughs> How do you know? And that's one of the hardest questions probably to try to answer. I know. How do I know? Because the Spirit revealed it to me for one. And I said, just look. I said, do you want to believe in evolution? No, that's not it. He saves, so he knows. He just he's His mind is so inquisitive that he wants to know more. You know, how? How do you know? How do you know that we're even here? Because God's revealed it to us. We have the truth by the Spirit of God. We have that truth. Well, how do you know? Well, let me ask you this. Would you rather believe in evolution? evolution that out of a one cell amoeba that they're trying to spill on us came an elephant and a butterfly or came a hippopotamus and a, and a hummingbird you really believe that that's far-fetched god created all things and all things that he created are beautiful and in her proper place. Mm -hmm. And man is trying to destroy every bit of it. Always have, always will. God made man in his image. Now man makes gods in their own image. Romans 1, 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So God left them over to a reprobate mind. Those he left over a reprobate mind, I have no, no quarrels at all, or no thoughts 
any different than those he left over to riverbait mine are the ones that are condemned already. Cannot be saved. Note that John affirms that Jesus Christ is the true God. On our way here, guy had a bumper sticker. It says, do you know where you're going when you die? Are you going to heaven? Or are you going to hell? It's a good question, isn't it? We talk to too many that say, I'm going to hell, man. It's going to be so fun down there. I'm going to be with all my friends and we're just going to have a big time party. You need to read Luke 16. Conclusion. Obedience, love, and truth are the key thoughts of this epistle. They are the evidence of salvation and the essentials of fellowship, the secret of true and abiding life. They're found in the scriptures. Brother Ray mentioned the verse that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not only do we supposed to read the word of God, we're to hear the word of God. That's why we put so much emphasis, Brother Chuck's putting so much emphasis on Wednesday, Brother Ray on the, in the morning and me right now. We have to put the emphasis on the Bible. That's the only true thing that we have to hang on to. The word of God. We can all do better. All he said, he's given us the tools. All we have to do is use them. May God bless his word to your heart today.